to part two of this how to draw a greyhound uh, Italian greyhound tutorial today we're going to be starting on the ears we're going to see if we can get both ears done today if we can that's fine um, but we're going to give it a go now with Italian greyhounds they have rose ears so this means that they're rose shaped they have little folds in them they're set back um, so I'm going to show you the best ways to approach these types of ears. Again, we have very, very sharp fur on the ears and then we do have some of the skin showing within the ear itself. All the resources you need are linked below. The line art and the photo are in my Facebook group. Uh, do join, especially if you're following along. We've had some amazing results so far from the Border Collie tutorial being shared. Um, so yeah, I will zoom into the first ear and we will get started. So first up, we're going to start with this little triangle part of the ear. So again, we're looking at the shapes that we can see and um, I'm going to apply the base layer in this triangle area. And this is going to be the first section of the ear that we uh, draw in. This is the warm grey one. And I'm just going to apply this as a base layer along here. Again, I'm not erasing my graphite lines. It's going to be quite dark here. Um, and I've pressed lightly. If you haven't pressed lightly, remove those graphite lines. Now I'm hoping this piece won't take us as long as the Border Collie piece. Maybe half as many um, real-time tutorials. But we will see. How is everybody? I am really cold today. I'm trying to warm up. It's very icy outside and we actually have snow here. Um, so I've got a very happy dog. I have a Siberian Husky for those that uh, don't know. Um, and he's extremely happy that we have snow. <laughs> okay, so that's the base layer. So you can see that this base layer just covers all the paper. It's about medium pressure and it just helps smooth out the tooth and it will help stop getting uh, quite as much graininess that we can achieve um, in this paper. Uh, Fabriana is known for being, can be difficult to work with. Um, just got to work in the way that works best for you. For me, it's adding this base layer. So we're now going to take uh, warm grey four. And we're on grey four, we're going to start from the edge of the ears and bring it inwards. I'll show you what I mean. So we've got more on grey four, and on this, um, let me just zoom into my reference. On this um, corner of this ear, I'm just going to start bringing, so I'm starting from the edge and I'm bringing this warm grey four along the edge of this ear. Pencil lead feels very wobbly. I may have to uh, sharpen this. And I'm just going to keep layering very light layers. I'm not pressing hard. Keeping that sharp point near the edge of this ear. Now, there's not as much detail in these, these ears because they are out of focus. So all we're doing is kind of focusing on the values. We are doing these sharp pencil strokes, which is help going to build up the fur texture but we're not going to come in with any final layers of detail we're just going to leave it at the layers that we're building up here um, I think I'm just going to go and resharpen this pencil okay this should be better now so I've got this one grey four still and I'm just mapping in these dark areas curving yeah, there's a little bit of a curl in the ear. So we have a fold in the ear here. And we need to make sure that we're aware of that. Because this is what's going to help create those rose shaped ears. Um, now remember if you're drawing a breed of dog that you've not drawn before. And you're not sure about any parts. So say you weren't sure about the Italian Greyhound ears. Um, if you remember me mentioning the Border Collie video. If you check out the breed standard of the dogs. Um, especially from the country that they're from because standards can vary ever so slightly they may not but they can um, this is a, a UK Italian greyhound so I've looked at the UK breed standard and I know that these are meant to be rose shaped and it just really helps like 
with um, getting to know the shapes, especially if maybe a reference isn't the best quality. Gives you some kind of guidance. Okay, you can see that I've gone over this a few times now and we're starting to get a um, nice depth and some nice colours to the ear. Um, I've now got cold grey four and I'm just going to do the same but just in sort of in this middle section a little bit more and then over that warm grey. And then just curve it up. So I'm not I'm trying not to add too much detail. We have a little bit of detail now forming, and that's probably about as far as the detail is going to go with this piece. Because the ears are out of focus, and it will make more sense that these are out of focus as we start really building up like the rest of the face and getting those details in. Um, I'm then going to take my copper. Um, as you know, I like using the metallics in my work. And I'm just going to bring it along here. Ever so slightly. I'm not pressing hard, just very gently. Over the top of that warm grey and cold grey four. Okay, and then we want to take the warm grey two, and I'm just going to blend over the top of all of that. So the warm grey two I use as a blender. It's very good for helping you to blend and just smooth things out. And this is also going to help us with um, keeping that lack of detail. So it's the lack of detail that's going to help us give us that blurred, out of focus look of the ears. Okay, that there, that's fine. Uh, now, in this sort of centre area, I've got the warm grey free. So we're going to be using quite a lot of the greys in this dog. Um, and I'm just going to bring this warm grey free. Again, I'm, I am focusing on the fur direction, because even though it's out of focus, you can still see the direction that this fur is going in. So we want that to be evident in our drawing as well. So that's the warm grey three. I'm just going to go over the top of that with uh, the beige red. These are all the polychromos. I'm just using the polychromos. Very lightly, I just want a bit of a pinkish tone going across here. Um, and then I'm going to get that copper because we used the copper. Um, and I'm just going to blend that into this lighter section. So that's just going over this dark warm grey bit and then bringing it into the lighter area. When I say lighter, this area is just ever so slightly lighter than the um, outside area. Um, then taking that warm grey two over the top again and I may just come back in with that warm grey four just to really darken this ear up again on the outside um, so uh, warm grey four and I'm just gonna a bit harder pressure just to help darken up this ear because we want it to have that contrast this piece is all about the values so when things start looking the same tonal value, we need to up the contrast. Now you can also check if you've finished the drawing and you're not sure if your contrast is right. If you take a photo of that drawing and add it to a photo editor or just edit it from your phone, settings, um, and change the saturation, desaturate it, change it to black and white. You'll be able to see if your tonal values are correct just from that uh, black and white image. Uh, this is the one grey five just to help darken this corner here. And then I'm going to take that one grey two again over the top just to help blend and keep that really out of focus. Okay, so there's the uh, 
corner of the ear. This is just the one way frame, just things just about back and forth, darkening and lightening. So just darken and lighten it as you wish. Again, I want you to be able to see the colours that you see. If you don't see these colours, use the colours you see. I want to give you that confidence to be able to do that yourselves as well. Okay, so uh, back to the warm grey one. Now, I'm actually just going to lighten this uh, graphite. It's a bit dark. I'm going to do the top of this ear now. So I'm just going to take my putty eraser. Just going to lift that bit of graphite along this edge here and into that ear. And again, I'm just going to apply this base layer. Now, your base layers... If you um, are getting a nice smooth base layer, it doesn't matter which way you um, do the pencil direction because it's the layers on top that um, are important. If you aren't sure that your base layer is correct, just follow that fur direction um, just so that you ensure that everything's in the right place. So we're just going to come, just do this like top section. We will add it to the his head uh, once we've got the ears in. We just want some nice little rose ears. Okay. So again, I'm going to start with the warm grey four, like we did down here. And then following that and i'm curving my pencil stroke so the curving around this ear just going to help give me that effect that this ear is starting to curve ears aren't flat so obviously there's something going on behind this ear you can see the back of that ear oh we can't see the back of that ear sorry we want to create the effect that there is the back of the ear behind here wow that's hard to say <laughs> okay so this is the one gray for along just along this edge um, and I'm going to take the warm grey three so I've got the warm grey three and I'm just again going to follow that direction and just overlap where you've got the warm grey four and then bring it down here And then again, I'm making sure that this curves. So this is nice and curved. So you want you don't want straight lines. You want curved lines here, and that sort of curves here. So I'm constantly looking back and forth for that reference photo and curving these lines here. So we'll do this little section first. Um, I've got the cold gray four. Um, so we've got if I just work out here. Cold grey far along this bottom line here. And I'm just going to blend that ever so slightly. I'm um, just going to take the cold, uh, warm grey five and I'm just going to darken just this edge ever so slightly. I may need to sharpen my pencil because it's looking, it's not as a smooth an edge as I'd like here. We might be able to work it out. If I get the one grey two, just quite sharp and just smooth this edge off. You see how we nice got a smoother edge now. Um, and then I can just blend here over the top there. Um, take the beige red and I'm just going to bring that beige red where we've got it and then up this ear ever so slightly. Um, okay, we're also going to take the copper and I'm just going to run this copper along the bottom here. So you can see it's like a dull grey colour is this copper, but it is very different in tonal value to the warm greys and the cool greys. So it's not, I use the copper and the gold for like another grey tone that's just ever so slightly different. Um, and then I'm going to go over that with my one grey two in 
we can see now that we're really starting to get the shape of this ear it's coming along really nicely right so i'm going to build my way for this ear sort of from here over um so i'm going to take the cold gray four it's quite blue in tone here so i'm going to take the blue, cold gray four first and just add that to this little corner here and then i'll go over the cold gray four with the warm gray four just to knock back that blue tone but we'll still get a nice hint of blue shining through and then i'm just going to bring that warm gray four along the top here and then we'll go to the warm gray three and again i'm following this fur direction so it's curving up and round here And then along this top the light here is a bit darker and then it's lighter here so you just all i'm doing is following the shapes where's it dark where's it light and just mapping them in that's all this is um and then i've got the copper again just over the top of this warm gray free And then I'll take that one grey two just to help with the blending. So the one grey two is going to be very useful for this portrait, especially for like blending and smoothing out. Um, mainly for these ears. Because you can see that we've not really focused on the detail in the ears, but we can see fur direction. Um, and they when like I say, when we get the head in and the more details in, we'll really see that those ears are um out of focus. I've now got the warm grey five um, and then we have a, dark, a really dark mark here so I'm just going to map this in first with the uh, warm grey five. I'm not sure if we're going to go over this with the warm grey six or maybe the dark sepia. We will see but I just want to map in this dark clump of fur. Remember it's still clumps of fur even though it's just on a bit of a smaller scale. Um, and then I'm going to take that beige red. I can see that pinkish tone here again. So I'm trying not to use too many colours in this piece for you guys, but I still want to add the colours that I see. Um, and then just going to take that warm grey free again along here. Just this bit needs darkening up. Right. Now I can see some little bits of fur detailing, so we're going to add them in, but very, very lightly. So I've got the warm grey four, and what I'm doing is I'm just going to very lightly use a sharp edge and just map in some of these dark lines of clumps of fur that we can see. I'm not going to do too many because we don't want, again, we don't want this ear to be in focus. It's going to have that blurred look to it. As it comes further down here we're starting to get the detail as it's the face is in focus so the bottom of the and the base of this ear we're going to have quite a bit of detail i'm just going to add a few lines here and again just blend that dark bit here um okay right I'm just going to leave that detail in like that for now. I don't want to do too much. Um, this is the one grey too. Uh, if I need to add more details, I can add more details um, after. Right, let's do the next little triangle that we can see. So there's another triangle here. So again, I'm just breaking it down into the shapes that we're seeing. So the base layer of one grey one. Now this corner of the ear is quite dark um, and we definitely want to recreate um, this darkness. So I'm going to take, first of all, I'm going to take, I want my walnut brown. Um, if I can find my walnut brown. Okay. Uh, walnut brown and I'm very lightly just going to bring this walnut brown out from the corner of this ear I'm not going all the way to the edge just very very gently bring this walnut brown light pressure don't need to press hard 
all the way up. Um, I've then got the one grey free and I'm going to curve it round here. Now remember we've got a really light line where the ear fold is so we're going to make sure we leave that little white line. I say white, it's the base layer. <laughs> and I'm taking the one grey free over the top of that walnut brown. I'm going to get my uh, dark sepia. Uh, now it's really dark in this corner so I'm going to use the dark sepia to just darken that corner up and just darken along this edge. Pressing a bit lighter as I come up this line and then this corner is really dark. So I'm just going to darken here and then I'm just going to blend it outwards. You see it's not taking too long this year. Um, and then I want my one grade two wherever um, that's gone it's here. <laughs> Um, and again, just the one grey two, just to help with this blending, mainly because it is such a quite a small ear um, and because we want a nice blended and out of focus look is why I'm using this one grey two quite a lot. Um, I'm just going to go back to the one grey four um, and I want this part of the ear to be darker so that that lighter band shows up. So I'm just going to use that one grey four. And this is all it's about, like if you have an area in the ear that you need to darken, just go back and darken it up. The more you start adding layers and other colours into other areas, the more you'll be going, ah, okay, this area's not quite dark enough. So I'm just going to darken here, and then again, I'm just going to blend that with the warm grey too. Okay, so you can see we're really starting to get the shape of this ear coming in now. Just get that dark sepia again, just a little bit more along here. Okay, so the next part is the, uh, there's a little curve here in the ear. So I'm going to get that bit in first. Um, I'm looking for these important shapes I can see and I want to get them mapped in first. So... Um, this is the cold grey one this time because it's quite bluish on this corner at the top. So I'm just using the cold grey one here. I'm then going to take the warm grey five very lightly. And what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of following that dark line that I can see in this ear fold. Very lightly, just in case I need to erase. Um, remember we can we can darken. So you've got kind of like that fold here and then that's another dark area where it blends into that ear. Um, I'm then going to go back to the warm grey one. So you've got the cold grey one at the top and then I'm just going to bring this back down into the warm grey one. Blend over a tiny section of that cold grey. Um, just get the cold grey one again and I'm just going to go over the, that blue highlight and then a little bit of that warm grey. Okay. Um, I'm then going to use the cold grey four along the top here. And again, I'm making sure those lines aren't perfectly straight. They're curving. And then I'm just going to bring it down. This cold grey far down the ear here. Um, I'm then going to take my warm grey four um, and then again going over that cold grey here and then bringing that cold grey, uh, warm grey four, sorry, into here. And then the one, one grey two along this darker section to help with that blend. Um, and then I'm going to take the one grey one along that highlight. Um, and then I've got the one grey three and I'm... Oh, that's not one grey three. One grey free, and I just again just darken. And by darkening this ear, the first little section of the ear that we did, it's just going to push 
this part of the ear backwards and push this part of the ear further forwards. So just darkening along this edge again with a warm grey free. Bit of a harder pressure just to help with that darkening. Um, and then I'll just take that warm grey one again just to highlight that that's an edge. Um, and then the cold grey one again just in this little highlighted area. You can see just by doing it in sections that we're really starting to get this nice ear. Um, and then taking the warm grey five again, and we're just going to darken that line. So I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to, oh, fairly hard to pressure now. And I'm just going to follow this line around here. Bring it down. And then I'm just, if you need to darken any of this inside hair, feel free to do that with a warm grey five. I'm just going to start blending into this ear here. It's all just about like following the shapes and the tones. Is this a darker grey? Is it a lighter grey? And just applying the pressure that you need to help you with those tonal values. Doing something like this, I find, is definitely um, helpful because it means that you're really focusing on getting that contrast correct. And it's that contrast that's really going to help you with um, making it look realistic. Um, okay, let's get the rest of this grey fur in and then we'll focus on the pink in the middle of this ear. So uh, the one grey one again, and I'm going to bring this section in here. Now we're going to start getting a bit more um, detail showing in this ear. It's starting to come a bit more into focus. So I'm just going to do along here. Um, I'm just trying to focus on which bits are. Let's do this little triangle here. So I've got another triangle and a bit of a line here. Um, I'm, I'm also going to take the warm, uh, cold grey one, sorry. Um, this area is quite pinky blue, so I'm just going to use the cold grey one as the base layer here. Just along this little edge here and I'm blending a little bit over that one grey one just to help get a nice blend between those two base layers okay now I've got the one grey four and again I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna follow that fur direction and just map in this darker grey tone that I'm seeing along here And then it's darker grey here, so I'm just going to use this warm grey for It's like another kind of base layer, just to darken here before we come in with any detail. Um, and then I'm going to take the warm grey free and just go over the rest of this warm grey base layer with the warm grey free. And then take the one grey two just to help with that blending. Like so. I now have the burnt umber. And I'm just going to take this burnt umber ever so slightly along this darker grey. So where we put that warm grey for, just going to use this war, uh, burnt umber ever so gently, very lightly along here and then take the uh, warm grey free just over the top just to help blend into this area here and that's just going to give us a nice brownish grey tone just where that light is hitting and giving a bit of a brownish tone there. Okay, right. Then back to the one grey one as a base layer. Um, and I am just going to apply this base layer along here, this darker patch of fur. And 
And I'm just going to bring that down here because it's all going to start blending into his face. Okay, um, so I'm going to start off with a warm grey free in this corner. Um, so this ear hair is kind of, so it's been curving round here. It's now going to curve up and round here. So I'm going to get a nice clump of fur there that's just doing the curving. And then I'm just going to use that warm grey free here. Oops. Um, I'm then going to take my dark sepia and I'm just going to bring that dark sepia along here. I'm not pressing hard with this. I can increase the pressure and make it darker as we go along. I'm just kind of using this to map out. I want everything just mapped out at the moment. So that includes like fur direction, the colours. Just want to map it out. So you can see I've just mapped in with that dark sepia. Um, and because I'm happy with where that is, I'm just going to come in now and I'm just going to add a bit of a finer detail along here. But also I'm going to press a bit harder now and I'm going to start darkening up this clump of fur. Not pressing too hard. I don't want to totally ruin the paper. Um, we don't want to burnish the layers so that you can't get any more layers down. I just want to... I done slightly more pressure than I was previously using just to darken this area up. And then I'm just going to darken that corner as well with that dark sepia as I come along. See, it needs to be a bit darker. Okay, and then just here, um, and then the one grey two again over that top. And I'm just going to blend that bottom area there. You see the difference now in the tonal values? Um, and then I'm going to take my copper and I'm just going to bring this along the rest of that base layer very gently. See there's like that brownish tone to the fur as we come into this side of the head. So this will be a nice transition when we go into like the burnt umbers and Van Dyke browns. Um, and then I've got the warm grey free. I'm just going to go over the top very lightly with a warm grey free. Okay, right. We need to get some of this uh, pinkish fur in soon. Um, I'm just going to take the warm grey two over the, this highlight corner here. Now we do have a brownish patch of fur there. So that's why I'm using the warm grey two in this corner. Um, and then I am going to take my uh, one grey one for a base layer, this little section of fur here. Um, we want um, the nougat, so I've got a uh, nougat, so it's a nice brown tone. Again, I, I love this colour in the portraits. And I'm just going to take this over this corner here. I love this colour. I do use this colour a lot. We need to order a few more. <laughs> okay, um, and then I'm going to go over that with the warm grey free, very lightly. I want that brown tone to show through. Okay, and then I'm just taking that warm grey four and I'm just darkening this little highlight, uh, shadow here. Um, I'm just going to take the dark sepia very lightly along this dark line. This line is meant to be darker. So I'm just going to very gently. Oops, sorry. Um, I've got the warm grey one here because this bit is a bit of fur blending into the ear. So I'm just kind of, kind of going around this ear now. Um, warm grey far with the greys where, where it's going to blend the skin and the ear. Um, so just like here, just going to darken and blend that section. Um, and then this kind of section is all the ear. Um, so let's do um, this area. So I think for the base layer, we're going to take an ivory. So I've got a sharp ivory. And I'm going to use this as the base layer. Now, because this isn't fur, this area, 
and it's skin instead of using like long strokes like we've done for the rest of the year i'm going to use circular motions like we do on the eyes and this is going to help create a nice smooth look so i'm just going to do this top part first and i am going to be removing those graphite lines so this is just the ivory very gently making sure that i really get a nice smooth look to this fur uh, to this skin sorry so circular motions along the top here and i'm just going to bring it down this corner i haven't erased that graphite line yet so i'm not i'm bringing the ivory up to the graphite but i'm not covering that graphite i'm going to erase that graphite when we get there um so we've got quite a bit 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 big section big section drawn out so i'm just gonna um just focus on this area of the ear first um so then i'm going to take the beige red and very lightly again and circular motions over the top of the ivory and i'm just following the shapes again following those colors and using circular motions to help get that nice smooth look so that it looks like skin uh, bring that down here again i'm following the shapes and shadows circular motions and you can do it do this at your speed do it as slow as you need to or as quick as you need to just take your time okay now in some of these areas we've got a blue tone and a bit of a warmish tone so i'm going to take my um warm gray one first over the top of some of this light flesh so in this corner here um so this is like going to help create this like shadow um and then i'm just going to get the cinnamon and very very lightly go over that warm gray and you can see how we're just creating a shadow that's not too in your face it's not too bright but we're getting a nice shadow that's following that shape of this ear everything again is about the shape of this ear we want to follow those contours within the ear itself um, and then getting the cold gray uh, one in this corner here now i do need to remove that graphite line so i'm just going to very gently come in with that putty eraser okay and in this corner use the warm grey one and blend that outwards and that's coming down here and then get the cinnamon and i'm following that line and bringing it down okay and then the beige red over the top of that just to help with that blending where i need it to blend and look just a bit pinker here and bring that down here as well um, and then i'm just going to use the ivory over the top of all of this just to help that blend so it's not as bright a pink as the reference photo i don't want it to be i want it to be a bit more muted in tone if you want a bit more pink in your ears um you could use the pink madder lake um i just want this to be a bit more muted um so again just do the way that you want um make this piece your own so i just went back over with the cinnamon and now i've got that light flesh just again just to help darken that ear okay so I've got the cold grey one again and I'm just going to do this little corner here with the cold grey one. Again take that cinnamon, 
blend over where we did that dark sepia ever so gently and then over that cold grey circular motions and then that beige red again over all of that and bring it down and then I'm just going to go back in with the cinnamon it just needs to be a bit darker along that line blend it and then circle motions just to help with this shadow here and then I'm just taking that cold grey one again just over the top of that cinnamon here just to help get that bluish tone back to the uh, page okay so you can see how just slowly doing this it's all starting to come together uh, this is the beige red and I'm just applying more pressure now just to darken this fold or this area of the ear that I'm treating as like a fold and then just a bit lighter in the middle where it's a nice highlight like so so you can see we really really are starting to get a really nice ear um, I'm just going to take the warm grey free um, we've We've got this section of fur here that just needs a bit of detail. So I'm just taking the warm grey free and bringing some little bit of detail in, just some fur direction. In over this base layer. Um, and then I'm just going to take that warm grey one just to blend. And then a warm grey two just to knock back how blue this area is okay right nearly there with the first ear so I'm going to do this little line that's coming um, in between these two sections so I'm just going to again get my putty razor and lift that graphite and then I've got the ivory as the base layer and I'm just going to do this little line here and then uh, the warm, uh, the beige red, sorry, coming down ever so slightly to help with this blend. So we want everything again. We really need this to look really smooth in this ear. Um, and then I'm going to take the cinnamon. So this section is darker. So I'm just going to take this cinnamon and go over the ivory circular motions again. And then I'm going to take the warm grey one and go over the top of that cinnamon. So now I need I know I need to darken this shadow up again, which we can do. And um, we may use a um no, we'll keep it to the cinnamon. So I'm going to take that cinnamon again and I'm more pressure and I'm just gonna darken again this little shadowed area okay and then i'm just cinnamon in this section okay so you can see we've got a nice shadow here and we're going to start getting a really dark shadow um in this section of um his ear so again we're going to use the ivory as a base layer so I'm just going to add this in this little corner now um, I'm then going to take the cinnamon and I'm going to use again circular motions all across this section That gives us that nice pinkish undertone that we want. I'm then using the red violet very lightly where we've got this shadow. Very small strokes just to create that little shadow here. And that comes along this section of the ear. And up. And then we bring it down into this corner. So this is the red violet, it's going to give us a nice reddish pinkish tone and that comes down. So again I'm just looking at the shapes 
and this is going to be dark in this corner so just mapping it, everything in that I can see just the different shapes and then just going to go over the top of that again with the cinnamon And then this section again, just to keep darkening it up. So it's all about these layers. Each layer is just going to help us with darkening it up each section. Um, and then again, the red violet. So I now know that this little area is really dark. So I'm just going to apply harder pressure. And darken here. And I'm just going to start bringing that round here as well. Not as dark as in that corner, but just darkening it up. And bringing this slightly down. Yeah. And then again, using that cinnamon just over to help blend that into this pinkish area here. Now I'm going to use my light red violet. I think it is. Um, let's find it. Oops. Uh, yes, the light red violet. Um, very lightly going over here and it comes into this corner. It's all very light pressure over the top here and then again back over with the cinnamon um, and then I'm just going to take that red violet again and if I want to just darken up some of this pinkish tones very lightly Give it that really nice pinkish red tone without it being too, too pink. So my the ear that I've drawn isn't as pink as it could go. You could again you could use the middle uh, purple pink, the pink madder lake. Um, I'm sticking to like the cinnamon, the beige red, the red violet because they're a bit more neutral in tone. Um, I'm just taking the cold grey one here just to blend over and into this ear. Um, and then the dark sepia, I'm just going to bring some of those first strokes from this section into that ear. Okay. Right, now we need the warm grey one. We just need to do the rest of the fur here. Um, I'm just going to lift that bit of pigment with the graphite. This was just a little bit dark there. Um, and then base layer I'm really happy with how this ears turned out it's a nice little ear <laughs> um, I'm going to take the cold grey one in this corner so we've got like a nice triangular section into this line um, and then I'm going to take the cinnamon. We've got some pinkish fur coming in here, so just a few little pink lines. And then I'm going to go over that little corner, so this triangle corner here with the ivory, and into that red violet. Okay. And then this bit of fur, I'm going to use the one grey five. And I'm just going to add in the fur direction. Very lightly. I'm not pressing too hard. I just want that resemblance of fur. And then we just want it to look like this ear is connected to its head. Um, and then the one grey two. Over the top of that. Okay, that is uh, the first year. Um, I think we will get some of this um, fur in around this head. Um, I may do the other ear next part. I, 
I'm just thinking because it has taken us quite a while to do one ear I don't want to overload you too much the other ear will be the same process as this for anybody that wants to go ahead and uh, get that ear done um, but I think yeah I think I'm just going to break it up into little parts so we'll do this bit of fur and uh, this ear this time um, and then we'll do the rest of the head and ear uh, next time um, so this is the one grey one as a base layer um, I'm just again lighten this bit of graphite because it's quite dark I know it probably means that there's going to be a few more parts of this tutorial but I'd rather break it down slowly than do too much at once um, And I don't, I don't want to make these tutorials too long. I'm trying to keep to an hour. Um, I'm just, and I'm going to bring it down here a little bit. Okay, so we've got a base layer in now. So we're going to get this bit of fur done. Um, and then I think we may call it that. We'll see. We'll see how he's looking. <laughs> Um, okay, so I am going to take my nugget because uh, we have a nice brownish tone to the fur here. So I'm very lightly just mapping in some brown tones. Now we are going to start getting a bit more detail in this um, part of his face. Um, so we will be focusing on some of the detail. Again, just mapping in some nugget, which gives a nice undertone to this fur. And this is why I'm using the um, polychromos as well, because they are a transparent pencil. These colours of like the browns and the blue tones will just shine through really nicely with the layers that we're going to add on top. Um, and now we have the... Um, Excuse me, one grey four. And I'm just going to go over the top of that nugget. And again, make sure that we're following that fur direction. And I'm also going over where we've got that base layer. We want just more of a grey tone without the brown undertone. So I'm saying that this tutorial won't be as long, but if I'm breaking it down, we'll see. Because I think the ears are quite detailed and we want to make sure that the structure of the ears is correct. So I'd rather get the structure correct for you. Um, because the fur shouldn't take us as long, it's just a lot of greys. And once I've kind of taught you the techniques, you can, if you feel like you just want to go on ahead, um, you can. So I'm just going to bring this. So this is still the one grey far, and I'm just following that fur direction. That's all I'm doing. Okay, um, I'm then going to use my uh, one grey five this time, um, and I'm just going to start darkening some of this up. So I'm coming from the ear, and this area is quite dark. So we're just going to darken this patch up with the one grey five. I 
Okay. Um, and then I'm going to start bringing this down the face. And all I'm doing is I'm just, where there's some more darker shadows, I'm using this one grey five light pressure just to help get that contrast in. This area, this um, section of his um, ear needs to be darker, so I'm going to use a harder pressure with this one grey five now. Just to darken that little section here. You can see how we're just slowly, slowly coming in and we're just darkening up areas now. Um, and this is kind of mainly where we've got some of that nugget underneath as a shadow. And we're just following for a direction. And I'm going to take the uh, one grey two and I'm going to use it as a blender but I'm also following fur direction. I'm not smoothing out too much. I'm using it like we have the other pencils to create the fur but it is going to help us blend nicely together. And then here I can use it just more as a blender. Um, okay, right. Now that I'm looking at this, I can see areas that I need to darken. So that's what I'm going to do before I finish this tutorial. Um, so I've got the one grey five um, and I'm coming in on this ear again. Now with this being mainly like a grey dog, it's going to be easier to see like your tonal colours. We don't want this to look flat, we want some life in here. We need to really get those contrasts in. Um, and then I'm just darken that edge. Uh, that was the one grey five. Um, I've then got the one grey three again, and I'm just going to darken this edge here. And by using a straight line, it's going to give you that straight edge that we can see for the fold. I'm just going to blend that over that warm grey five. Again, I've not focused on details. Um, I just want a nice blend there. Um, and then I'm just going to bring that warm grey five around here. Now this part I'm kind of doing by eye. I'm not really looking at the reference photo. I'm looking at my, my drawing now and I'm going, where do I want it to be darker? Where do I want the contrast? Um, and it's kind of just along these edges. I just want to darken some of this up. And this is what you can do. You can make a piece your own. When you want somewhere to be darker, just darken it. Um, obviously, it's harder when it's a pet commission, but when it's an original, just go for it. Have fun with the piece. Um, this is the one grey two. Um, okay, and then I'm going back to that dark sepia. Um, I'm just going to sharpen this a minute. So now I've got the dark sepia and I'm just creating a little bit of fur detail. Just not a smooth an edge here. Darken this corner up. I'm just going to darken this bit of fur as well. And 
yeah next time we will do the um next ear and the uh fur and then it's just going to be a matter of uh the fur coming down and um creating this contrast this nice dark ear I'm just going to darken very lightly. I'm using this dark sepia just to help with some of these shadows. It's all about the shadows now. We want, we've want we got the mid-tones in, we've got the highlights in. So any areas that aren't looking dark enough or contrasted enough, um, I'm using the dark sepia very lightly just to help darken some of these areas up. I'm not pressing hard with the dark sepia, not unless it is a dark area like this clump of fur. We don't want it to be um, a black dog, it is a grey dog. So we do need to keep that in mind. Um, I'm just going to rub the dark sepia very lightly in this corner of the red violet as well, just to help darken that up. Um, and then I'm just going to take the warm grey too. I'm just going to darken some of this inner ear ever so slightly. For that long row too. And then just a bit of blending where, where I feel like I need to just blend out a bit. Especially with this ear, wanting this part of the ear to be out of focus. Just helps to soften out all those pencil strokes down. Um, let's have a look at that. Okay, I'm happier with that. Um, I'm just going to take this cinnamon along here and blend it light. So I'm sort of harder pressure along the tip and then lightly blending out, releasing the pressure as we come down this ear. Um, and then I'll take that beige red over the top. I'm just going to go into that bit of fur here. Um, okay, yes, I'm a lot happier with that ear now. Um, so we will leave the dog here. Um, we will do more details within this fur, but we've got the ear connected to the head now. We have a finished ear, um, which isn't as detailed as other areas yet, um, which is how we kind of want to leave it. We want it to look out of focus. Um, so yeah, I hope this has helped. I hope it's helped you understand how to draw an out of focus kind of area. You don't really focus on the details as much. And I will see you in the next part where we will be drawing the other ear. So in part three, I will come back and we will do this ear and connect to the head. Um, depending how long this ear takes, we may be able to get some of the fur and the head done and start proper detailing at the moment we've got a bit of detail coming in we really need to amp that up and amp up the contrast um but again i hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to join the facebook group um we're sharing works in progress there i'm sharing little behind the scenes of stuff that i'm working on at the moment um outside of the tutorial and yeah we're building up a nice community now if you haven't already please subscribe and i will see you in part three bye everybody